In this video, we're going to find out if you should get the Maserati Gricale Trofeo or a Porsche Macan GTS. So the Macan GTS, I mean, the Macan in general has really been killing the segment and this car is going straight after it and also straight after the top of the level, highest performance grade with this Trofeo model. And I think they did a really good job making a competitive offering. So let's get straight into it. Starting with the design, you get a Maserati because it has that personality. Porsche has a really good design character. So I'm not gonna hate on them because I love the look of the Macan, but this Maserati just hits different. You get a huge front grille, very bold grille slats, a Maserati Trident up front. And because of the Trofeo, you get the carbon fiber uh, front, like kind of lower chin spoiler right there, functional honeycomb vents, and then these uh, parking sensors, which are integrated, aren't, it's not too sleek, but it works, it gets the job done. Coming around the side here, uh, you do see the Maserati classic logo, very iconic brand, and then this yellow paint, which screams, I mean, attention, but also suits the body style very nicely. Coming along the side here, you see a nice LED headlight unit, nice blacked out housing. If you come down here, you see even more functional vents, nothing fake here, and then a nice vent down here to create an air curtain along the side for these 21 inch wheels with Bridgestone tires. These ones measure 255-40R21 because they sit on these nice 21 inch wheels which suit the car very well with drilled out high performance brakes with nice red brake calipers that say Maserati on it which look honestly amazing. It sits on an air suspension so you can adjust the height and it's adjustable based on the uh, driving mode you're in, Sport, Corsa, or Comfort, and then even an off-road mode, which we'll show you when we get inside. You get nice, you don't get pla black plastic cladding here. Everything is painted, which you wanna see on a more premium model. And then we got to the more important stuff. This nice classic Maserati. You see these on Dodge Neons, random people put them from Auto Trader. This is the real deal. This is where it came from. And then you see Trofeo, very nice font with that red outlining, which looks great. Coming along top here, you see obviously the blacked out window surrounds here look great. These handles are not actual like mechanical handles. You press a button and it pops the door open, closes, kind of like what Lexus does, but it's sleek. It doesn't even hand stick out as a handle. And I think it's a very nice classy touch. Going down here, the Trofeo model gets you carbon fiber side sills on the door. Very nice touch. And then it tucks away towards the end here and molds nicely with the painted portion. Very well thought out. And then on the back, you get 295 35R21. So staggered wheel setup, Bridgestone Potenza tire, sticky rubber, you want that for that grip. And then you can see your electronic brake as well as your actual you know, brake, which is a dual caliper setup on those drilled rotors, which is great to see. If you come up top here real quick, you see the uh, Maserati Trident, nice red outlines right there. And then a deck lip spoiler, it's very subtle, it's not too much, it extends a little bit with this black portion here. And then you do get a windshield wiper in the back, which you'd like to see. Maserati badging, chrome, that nice point, which is also reminiscent of what you saw at the front where that grill was. And then the Gracale, which is nice right there. And if you come down here, you see you get the carbon fiber diffuser right here, very aggressive, one large piece of carbon fiber and these quad tipped exhausts, which you guys have to listen to the exhaust. I'll put an exhaust clip right here so you guys can hear it because it deserves that attention. This thing is amazing. And to take a step back and take the whole rear end, very nice, sleek LED headlights. You don't get a light bar like you do on the Macan, but this is nice and it has a nice tie-in with that chrome in the middle. But let's show you under the hood because that's where things get really serious. All right, like I said, guys, they weren't messing around with this car. They took the engine out of the MC20, twin turbocharged V6 powered by Nituro, which is like their uh, pre-chamber technology, kind of derived from F1, not directly. Um, to get you 523 horsepower in this application and a zero to 60 in like 3.8 seconds, which is insane. I mean, we love how it sounds. You guys heard from the exhaust clip. It is amazing. You get a nice strut brace up top. And then it's cool to see that you get a car, you get an engine from a supercar into this small, their smallest SUV that they currently make. I really like think that's a great thing. And honestly, I'm super happy that Maserati did that, took that risk and is making a car that really, from a performance standpoint, competes with the Macan. But with that, let's show you the inside because they're still not messing around. They took the interior seriously as well. All right, I'm gonna start it up real quick. On the inside, you press the start button. That's on the steering wheel, which is cool. I'm gonna close my door here. And I do wanna start with these seats. The seats have a nice trident embossed in the headrest, red stitching, a very nice perforated kind of stitching pattern down here. They're heated and bedded like you would expect in this price range, because it's not like a joke of a price range. $115,000 is a lot of money to be blowing on a car like this. 
but you get leather on the dash, red stitching, very nice vents with very nice designs, perforation up here, more stitching and leather, and then you get to the center screen. You get a large touchscreen with Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, Alexa. I could even say like, hey Maserati, and it responds. I could say, cool me down, you know, I'm gonna cancel Canceled. it right now. And it'll lower the AC, raise the AC, give you GPS navigation, you ask for it, and that's awesome. Down here is your dedicated touchscreen for the AC controls. And if I press this button right here, you can control this clock up here. So you can change this to an actual clock, a compass, pedals, which is your basically brake input, and then throttle input, and then a G meter. So I'm just toggling that on this menu right here. It's nice to have the dual screen. I mean, you have to learn how to use it. And right between there is your push button gear selector. Not gonna say I'm a huge fan of this, because I'm not, especially the fact that it drives all the way on the right towards the passenger, uh, but this is how they decided to do it. Right below that, you get a wireless charger over here. Here's just a cubby where you can fit kind of, I put my cables because the USB ports are right there. You get cup holders, which are big. We got a Stanley cup and a small bottle to give you guys an idea. If I open this up here, we got the key. So nice leather, cold metal, very, very nice key. Big improvement over the previous generation key, honestly. And then down here, you get a 12 volt and then some felt liner on the uh, center console portion. Armrest, nice and padded. But that's enough of the passenger's kind of interior portion. Let's get onto the driver's side and show you what you get there. All right, so on the driver's side, let's start with the door here real quick. You get this Sonus Faber speaker grill. It is metal, it feels very nice, it has this very like aggressive textured pattern to it and sounds really good. All your switch gears down here, power up and down uh, mirror, uh, windows, your mirror controls. And then the button here is electronic on the inside as well, but you do have a mechanical redundancy down there and then another speaker grill over here. Going on to the pedal box real quick, I do want to point out that unfortunately, there aren't aluminum pedals. I would have loved to have seen that on this car. Even the dead pedal isn't even aluminum, so that, that would have been a nice touch, but they didn't. But if you come up top here, you got your parking brake and then your paddle mount, uh, your steering column mounted paddle shifters, which are metal. They look and then they just they feel so nice. The throws, I mean, we're talking about manual gear selector throws, but the throws on the paddle shifter are just like, you just, you just love to feel and play around with it. And then just like a, uh, a normal car, you can actually, well, just like a Ferrari, you can pull both power shifters, it'll put you neutral, and then you can push one to get you back into the drive. That's a nice touch. Let's talk about the steering wheel though. Heated and uh, <laughs> heated leather wrapped steering wheel, and then stop button right here and start. Your drive mode selector right here, we go into Corsa, and then you see your center gauge cluster right there is actually customized. As I'm changing the drive modes, you got off-road, comfort, GT, I'll wait for that message to clear. Sport and Corsa, which is H. So if I press this, I can independently adjust the suspension, which is a little damper right there. So I can get out of H mode into S and then I can just go into comfort mode or GT mode and I'm chilling. Digital display, very large uh, heads up display as well. And depending on the mode, so we're in GT mode. If I go into Corsa, you get a tachometer with shift lights and your gear and, uh, and speed, which is really cool. So that's nice. But honestly, sitting here, you feel very special. You get everything you need, the experience with the steering wheel, your information from the center screen, heads up display. It's a very solid setup. Let's hop in the back seat. I'll keep it real with you guys. I expected the back seats to be a disaster. I feel like this is, wouldn't have been the focus of this car, but I was wrong. The, the amount of leg room you get, I'm five foot eight, so I'm not, I'm not tall, but like taller people, I mean, just think of that. Like add a couple inches, you still got more room. Look how much, like, look how much room I get behind myself. You know, if you want someone tall to sit here, you know, I need to drink my milk or something, but like there's loads of room, loads of headroom, especially with this panoramic sunroof that extends very far back. This portion opens up, which is great. Going on the seats too, they didn't like give you different treatment. You get the same setup, the same stitching and uh, perforation. They're only heated, they're not ventilated, but I mean, we get that. And then the headrest still gets the same Maserati embossed right there with stitching on the surrounds. And then this center uh, armrest, cup holder setup is nice, a little, little slot for your phone, cup holders. And then when we go to the AC controls, you have three zones. So this is your third zone here. You can adjust your uh, temperature, your uh, fan speed, your vents over here. And then you get USB A and USB C ports down there. Let's open up the trunk and show you guys the practicality of a crossover. So opening up the trunk real quick, lifts up, power lift gate. You'd expect that when you're paying this type of money. And I wanna show you guys how easy it is to operate. This sunshade, privacy cover, very easy. Pulling on the seats, very easy. And on top of that, this one has the railing here. So you can actually, you press it down here, you slide this railing, you can take it out if you want, or you can lock it in place, tie down equipment, 
And I'll be honest with you guys, if you're driving this the way it's meant to be driven, you're gonna need those because you don't want things moving around here and making all sorts of noise or possibly breaking because this thing, man, it handles. Down here, you get a tire repair kit, no spare tire. You're not gonna be able to fit a 295 or I think it was 255 front uh, wheel underneath this. Unfortunately, it's just the way it is. So if you get a flat, call roadside or try your best with that. Uh, but you get a nice little privacy cover here. You can push this to pop that out if you don't want it. Locks back in place and then it closes really nicely. So good practicality. I could do without that beeping, but it is what it is. 